Hello, and welcome back to our study of Pnei Halacha and the teachings of Rabbi Yazim Alameid Shlita. Hard to believe that a week from now it will already be Chag HaPesach, HaBa'aleinu L'Tova. So we have a few sessions left of learning. As I mentioned yesterday, and I wrote the day before, that our learning from now through Pesach, until Pesach, is sponsored by our dear friends, Ellie and Steve Hammerman, in honor of their upcoming 64th wedding anniversary. And Steve's upcoming milestone, 85th birthday, incredible mazel tov. The next topic we have is Korach. Achar achilas ha-maror, korchim kezayis maror betol kezayis matzah. After we finish eating maror, we take a kezayis of maror, an olive's worth of maror, and we wrap it in a kezayis of matzah, tovlen osa becharosa, so we dip this combination, sandwich, whatever you want to call it, in charoset, and people also will, as we mentioned with the marah yesterday, that instead of slathering the marah with charoset, we just dip it in and then shake it off. Some do the same thing for korach. And some are not so careful in this, and they don't require you to shake off the charoset. Of course, charoset is everyone's favorite part. And we say, and we make the declaration, it's in every Haggadah, of Zechel HaMikdash. This is how Hillel used to do it in the time that the Beis HaMikdash stood, and we lean. And of course, we discuss the Shiurim of how big the Matzah has to be. In the time that the Beis HaMikdash stood, according to Hillel HaZaken, the Mitzvah was to eat Matzah with Mara, because it says, Al-Matzah usamorim yochluhu. And the Gemara mentions this dispute that according to the Rabbanon, they would eat matzah and they would eat mara. They wouldn't eat them together. And since the Gemara does not come to a decision on this machlokas, so therefore we try to follow both shitas, so to speak, and we do both like the Chachamim and Hillel. We have the sandwich, we don't make a bracha. Today, even Hillel would agree that you cannot fulfill matzah with maror today. Since we have no carbon pesach today, there is no paschal lamb sacrifice. The mitzvah of eating matzah is a Torah obligation. As we discussed yesterday, that the mitzvah of Mara today, without the Beis HaMikdash, is only rabbinic. And if you would eat them together, then the Mara, which is rabbinic, will mitigate or it will take away from the Matzah, which is a Torah obligation. Therefore, we first eat a Kezayis of Matzah, an olive's worth of Matzah, and then we have maror separately. We do that without matzah. Because we've already fulfilled the mitzvah of matzah. And if you would eat matzah with maror, then even though you've already fulfilled the matzah, but the matzah would sort of take away from the taste of the maror, which is a rabbinic mitzvah, and you've already fulfilled the Torah mitzvah. So therefore we do them separately. And after we have fulfilled both separately and individually the mitzvah of matzah and maror, then then we put them and we wrap them together. And we do this so that we can fulfill the custom of Hillel. And some say, there are some say that even though, of course, it's clear according to Hillel that we have to eat the matzah alone, but nevertheless, in order to eat maror, even on a rabbinic level, we should eat it together with matzah. And some say that even in the korach sandwich part, that that's actually a fulfillment of the mitzvah of maror as well. In any event, the kol hasvaros, it might be part of the mitzvah, Torah mitzvah, rabbinic mitzvah, however you look at it, but one should not make any interruptions until the end of eating korech, 
So from the time that we wash the tilas yadayim, and we sit down at the table, and we make hamotzi lechem in aretz alachilas matzah, we eat matzah. Then we take the mara and we say alachilas mara, we eat the mara. Then we take the mara and the matzah together, we make a sandwich, and we say zechul mikdash kehillel. From the time of washing until the time of finishing korech, one should not speak unless it is pertaining to the mitzvah itself, such as, can you pass the matzah, can you pass the maror, etc., etc., and making the brachas and the declarations. So this is part of the korech portion of the seder, one which I think that after the matzah and the maror, when we finally get to it after the magid portion, we have to make sure that we pay careful attention to this part as well. It has tremendous significance. I'll actually be addressing it on Shabbos HaGadol, a little bit for those that will be here in Livingston, New Jersey, this coming Shabbos, Shabbos Hagadol. But in any event, we all have the mitzvah of Korach, and whether it's Torah obligation, rabbinic obligation, it doesn't necessarily matter. They're part of our miscarriage, it's part of our Seder, and we all do so accordingly. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening today, and we will continue our learning next time. Again, thanking our friends, the Hammerins. Elvin and Steve Hammerman for sponsoring our learning today and through Pesach. Honor of their 64th wedding anniversary and Steve's 85th birthday. Mazel tov. Have a great day. We'll see you here next time as we continue. Penine Halacha, the teachings of Eliezer Malamed, Shlita.